$111.4 billion. Yeah, Apple just posted their holiday quarter results. And even now, in the midst of peak 2020-21, the cyberpunk on last generation consoles of years, Apple crushed it. And you will not believe how hard. Sponsored by Ting. Real quick, YouTube shows only a small percentage of you watching right now are actually subscribed. So if you like my videos, hit that button and we can build the biggest and the best community in tech together. The iPhone was up 17%. Apple sold $65.6 billion of them. Now, it is important to remember that the iPhone shipped later than usual last fall. So instead of initial surges being in the previous quarter, all of it was in this quarter, just all the surges. Same with the new M1 Max, but more on those in a scorching hot minute. Prices on the base models were up due to the more expensive components like OLED and 5G modems. But the mix was also really high, which means people who bought into the iPhone 12 almost immediately often bought into the more expensive models like the 12 Pro and the 12 Pro Max, which to me just highlights how people keep insisting on reading the market wrong. Like I said in my launch day review, it's not that everyone is looking and saying, I can save a couple hundred bucks by not going for the Pro. It's more like they're increasingly looking and saying, I can spend just a couple hundred bucks more and get the Pro. More people just wanna feel like they've gotten the best value price package per dollar. And that includes not only what it can do now, but how long it will last doing it, just how long it gets updates and even how high a resale price it sustains. And yeah, still the cachet, which is why I think switchers were up as well, meaning more people coming to the iPhone from Android and upgraders were just way up, meaning way more people going from an older iPhone to an iPhone 12, who just found now the right time to do it. And Tim Cook was also still just all shades of bullish because despite there now being over a billion iPhones in our pockets, y'all, globally, there are still more people without iPhones than with iPhones and he's looking at them maybe looking at you and thinks he can still get way more of that market, including you, especially in places like India. And what's really fascinating here is that Apple has built themselves up into an iPhone company, sure, but now more than an iPhone company. In other words, they use the iPhone to build up everything else so that when the iPhone isn't as strong, everything else just picks up the slack. But when the iPhone comes back strong, Everything else is still firing away and they just all become a benevolent cycle of force multipliers. Services were up 24% to $15.8 billion, driven by record performances in App Store, Music, and iCloud, among others. And when you include everything the App Store gets a cut of, Apple hit 620 million paid subscribers, which given how many of us are spending all of our time in lockdown, just to me makes the kind of sense that absolutely does. And in addition to the 1 billion iPhones, Apple has almost 1.7 billion devices in total in active use. And that's just a huge and still growing base to build more services on. Like I said, a platform to build another platform or several on. And that's also why even though Apple's margins just haven't really changed since the Steve Jobs era, they're at the high end right now. First, because that mix towards the higher products I just mentioned, but also because more people are getting into more Apple services. And my guess is Apple's hardware margins continue to get driven down by Apple continuing to invest in more expensive components like OLED and 5G. But services margins are just more than making up for that, allowing Apple to continue to make those hardware investments without eating into any ancillary product profits or simply running on empty, like some other companies seem to feel they have no choice but to do. The iPad was up a whopping 41% to $8.4 billion, driven by the ongoing work and school from home reality that so many of us have been facing for just so long now. But also the new iPad Air and the entry-level iPad updates were compelling. And like I said, while I think a lot of people who cover Apple still fail to realize the difference between cost and value, it seems like consumers are continuing to understand that even better and better now. But what's really, really remarkable here is that around half the people buying iPads were still first time iPad buyers, despite the tablet market essentially continuing to be an iPad market. And I think that goes back to work from home, but also to how just how badly most competitors continue to execute on tablets, especially in terms of software and ecosystem integration, which is a strength Apple just keeps showing over and over and over again with the iPad. Now, frustratingly, Apple lumps watch, AirPods, HomePods, 
and all the extras into the same category so competitors just can't easily see how well any one of them is doing at any given time. But taken together, they were up 30% to $13 billion. And a ludicrous, ludicrous 75% of Apple Watch customers were first-time watch buyers. I say ludicrous so repetitively because like the iPad, the Apple Watch essentially owns its market. But that market is pretty much the opposite of the phone market right now in that not many people have smartwatches. And so it's just wide, wide open with tons of room to run, especially for products like the lower priced but just feature packed Apple Watch SE. And I wonder if Apple's going to double down as in price down on the SE this year to get even more people into the watch and into services like Fitness Plus. The Mac was up 21% to $8.7 billion, which doesn't really take a Mentat to figure had a lot to do with the release of M1. That's Apple's first custom silicon for the MacBook Air, entry-level MacBook Pro, and the new base model, silver Mac Mini. Around half the people buying Macs were first-time Mac buyers as well. And since Apple still has only a tiny, tiny share of the PC market, there is just tons and tons of room for more growth there as well, especially as the next set of Apple Silicon Macs start coming out, the higher end Pros and iMacs, and over the next few generations of just all of them. In other words, dear legacy PC users, and you know who you are, Apple thinks the combination of industry leading performance, experience, and battery life are gonna prove just way, 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 just absolutely quad way too compelling for you to ignore. Much like the savings you can get right now, today, on your cell phone bill with Ting. Whether you want only a little bit of data or all of it, unlimited, Ting has the perfect plan for you and your family. You can get talk and text for just 10 bucks a month, data for 15, five gigabytes for 25, unlimited for 45, whatever you need. Just go to renee.ting.com, check out the plans and see how much you could save. You get access to the best nationwide coverage in America on pretty much any phone from the latest Galaxy S21 to just all those new iPhones. Keep your existing phone, keep your existing number if you want to as well, because the next generation of Ting Mobile is here. So seriously, go to renee.ting.com and see how much you could save and get $25 off. Just click the link in the description or go to renee.ting.com and get $25 off. And clicking on that link just really helps out this channel. For more, much more on how Apple runs their business, hit the playlist above. I explain, I sum up, I give you everything you need to know. So hit that playlist and I'll see you in the next video.